Hi, I'm Nick with Magic Chef. Today we're going to be going over some troubleshooting you can do if your refrigerator stops cooling properly. Any of the troubleshooting we go over today is going to pertain to the 9 and 10 cubic foot self-defrosting refrigerator. Our first point would be the freezer section. Let's get into it. The first section we'll talk about is the freezer. If you're having trouble with the freezer keeping temperature, there's a few things that we could check. First being, making sure that the fan is operable. The unit has an evaporator fan behind the back wall of the freezer. You could feel by the vents and make sure that you feel airflow. If you do not feel airflow, it's possible that your evaporator fan might need to be replaced. If you do feel airflow, then we could check the setting of the freezer. The recommended temperature is colder. If you feel like you want colder temperatures in the freezer section, go ahead and turn the knob to coldest. Allow four to six hours for this unit to stabilize. If you notice the temperature control knob in the freezer stuck or difficult to turn, it's possible that the unit could have ice or frost built up behind the back wall. Even though the unit is a self-defrosting unit, it may require a manual defrost. There are two ways you could do a manual defrost. First, being unplug the unit. Second, being turn the control in the refrigerator section to off, like so. When you do a manual defrost on the unit, it's possible that you could have water leaking out of the back and out of the front doors. The unit does have a drain pan in the back, but depending on how much frost you have, it's possible that that pan could overflow. If you're still having issues with the freezer not cooling after you do a defrost, make sure that the unit is in an ambient temperature of 50 to 85 degrees. The unit would need to stay in this temperature range for optimal performance. If it's below 50 degrees, the compressor does not need to cycle on as often, which will result in insufficient cooling. The unit would think it's cold enough already. If it's located in a room where it's above 85 degrees, the compressor is going to need to cycle more to keep up with temperature. See how much is in the freezer section. If this freezer is packed or you're blocking the vents, that cool air is not going to move throughout the freezer, which could lead to products defrosting or not keeping proper temperature. If your unit is beyond the initial one year part and labor warranty and you would like to access the evaporator fan, defrost heater, or the evaporator, you can do so by taking out these two clips, one on the top left and one on the top right. You could use a small flathead screwdriver to take out the clip. Once you remove the clips, you'll have access to two Phillips screws. Once you remove the screws, you can go ahead and pry the freezer wall out. After you pry the freezer wall out, you'll have access to the evaporator fan and fan blade, the evaporator itself, and the defrost heater. You'll also be able to see the air duct. This air duct will allow the cold air from the freezer to go to the refrigerator section. You'll see the defrost heater is a simple plug and play connection. You would simply unplug the connector and then realign the defrost heater. If you needed to replace the evaporator fan motor, once you have the back freezer wall out, you'll see two screws holding that in. Remove those screws and then you can pull out the evaporator fan. Now we can reinstall the back panel for the freezer. 
to do that, line up the back panel. Plug in the connector for the fan. And then tighten the screws. Put our clips back on. And that's it. If your refrigerator section is not cooling properly, remember to check the freezer first. As mentioned, the unit will take the cold air from the freezer and push it down to the refrigerator section. Inside the refrigerator section, you'll see the control. The control has three settings, cold, colder, and coldest. If you set the control to coldest, it will cause the unit to cycle more frequently, generating cooler air in the freezer. If you're having trouble with the refrigerator section cooling, you can try adjusting the temperature. To adjust the temperature, just press the set button once, and you'll see the LED light go to coldest. If you already have the unit on the coldest setting, make sure that the unit is blowing cool air to the fridge. To check that, you could put your hand in the back and make sure that you have some airflow coming out of the vent. If you do not have airflow coming from the vent, it's possible it could have an issue with the evaporator fan motor, or you might have ice built up in the freezer section. If you're having issues with the unit cooling and you notice the control board flashing in a sequence between cold, colder, and coldest, it's possible that the unit could have a bad evaporator fan motor. If the fan motor is giving the control board a bad reading, the control lights will start to flash. If you don't have any lights on the control board, that would indicate an issue with the PCB or the control board. The unit also does have an LED light assembly and the control board panel. You could access the LED light assembly by taking a small flathead and prying out the cover. Once you have the cover removed, you'll have access to the LED light assembly. It's important anytime you replace any electrical parts, make sure the unit has no power and unplug it. If you do need to access the LED light, the control board, or the temperature sensor, there are two screws holding in the panel. There's going to be one under the light cover, and then there's one behind the control. Those are Phillips screws, so all you'll need is a Phillips screwdriver. If you are within the one-year part and labor warranty, we do not recommend accessing the parts on your own. If you're beyond the initial part and labor warranty and would like to access the control, the LED light, or the temperature sensor, you could remove the panel by taking out the Phillips screws. Once you have the screws out, you can unplug the connectors. And now we have access to the LED light, the control board, and the temperature sensor. Once you have access to the LED light, there are two clips holding that in. Press on those clips. And then you could pull out the LED light board. The control board is located in the box. You could take a small flathead screwdriver and pry out those clips and then pull out the PCB box. 
You'll also see some sticky foam holding in a temperature sensor. You could remove that and replace the temperature sensor as well. Thank you for watching our video on our 10 cubic foot refrigerator troubleshooting. Remember, any of the troubleshooting we went over today pertains to the 9 and 10 cubic foot self-defrosting refrigerator. If you are within the one-year part and labor warranty and suspect an issue with an internal part, go ahead and contact us at 888-775-0202 or www.mcappliance.com and fill out a warranty service request. If you're beyond the initial one-year part and labor warranty and suspect an issue with the part, you can order the parts through our website at mcappliance.com or through our part distributor, partstown.com. If you're beyond the initial part and labor warranty and have an extended warranty, please contact the retailer for the extended warranty claim. If you did not purchase an extended warranty, but the unit is between one and two years old and purchased with a major credit card, you might still have an extended warranty through the credit card company. We urge that you contact the credit card company to see if they would cover that extended warranty for you. Thank you.